Gold. It has withstood the test of time. I think we can all agree that 2020 has been a year for the record books. <coughs> Facing a global pandemic, governments have printed a record amount of fiat, or paper, currency. The world economy is hanging in the balance, up against the unknowns of COVID-19, and the financial blows it's delivered to governments and businesses around the globe. But one thing, rather predictably, has stood strong in the face of international turmoil. Gold. You might be asking yourself why anyone would be thinking about gold during a global pandemic, when they should be more worried about brushing up on good hygiene habits and investing in hand sanitizer. But, while governments were busy writing up stimulus packages, bailing out the airlines, and fighting to keep hospitals from becoming overrun, the value of gold was steadily increasing on the sidelines. Between January 2019 and August 2020, the value of gold rose an incredible 55%. With stock markets crashing, bankruptcies looming, and the threat of another recession, investors turned their attention to the one medium of exchange that has withstood the test of time. The Medal of Men and Empires Gold has captured the hearts and minds of men and empires for thousands of years. It's the world's most precious metal, incredibly rare and imperceptibly valuable. But what makes gold unique is that its value has been universally accepted and has transcended both cultures and borders for over 6,000 years. Ancient civilizations coveted the precious metal and used it for jewelry and in architecture as early as 4000 BC in what is modern-day Eastern Europe and Iraq. The ancient Egyptians were the first to smelt and refashion gold. By 1500 BC, Egypt started using gold as the standard medium of exchange for international trade. Many Middle Eastern countries used the shekel, a coin made of electrum, a naturally occurring alloy of two-thirds gold and one-third silver. 150 years later, the Babylonians introduced the use of fire to test the purity of gold. King Solomon of Israel used 34 tons of gold, worth around $1.5 billion today, to adorn the temple in Jerusalem. Gold as Currency Let's fast forward a little bit to 560 BC. Gold has always been a hot commodity, but this is the turning point at which gold becomes the leading lady on the world financial stage. A relatively unknown ancient people who lived in modern-day Turkey, the Lydians, played a big role in how we use gold and modern currency today. If you've ever heard the phrase, as rich as Croesus, you can thank the Lydians. He was their most famous king, and is credited with being the first to mint coins made exclusively from gold. But Croesus's reign only lasted for 14 years before Lydia was conquered by the Persians, who took all of their gold. Then, the Persians were conquered by the Greeks who took all of their gold, who were conquered by the Romans who took all of their gold. Can you see a pattern developing here? In 1066 AD, with the Normans' defeat of Great Britain, metallic currency is reinstated with the introduction of pounds, shillings, and pence. One British pound was literally one pound of sterling silver. In the 13th century, Venice started minting the gold ducat, which would become the most popular and widely exchanged coin for nearly 500 years. In 1397, Giovanni de Bici de Medici founded the infamous Medici Bank in Florence. The Medici Bank grew into the most powerful private institution in 15th century Europe, financing governments and even the Vatican. The Medicis built their power, fortune, and legacy on the exchange of florins, Florence's signature gold coins. Throughout the 16th and 17th centuries, the ruling kings and queens of Europe funded expeditions to the New World in search of the one thing that could further secure their dynasties, gold. Europeans were enraptured by the myth of El Dorado, the lost city of gold, 
and many conquistadors were commissioned to scour the jungles of the South American continent in search of it. They never found the lost city of legend, but there was still gold to be found in the New World. In 1848, gold was found at Sutter's Mill, near Sacramento, California, and one of the most important gold events in modern history kicked off. By the end of 1849, nearly 100,000 gold prospectors had flocked to the U.S.'s west coast, and for good reason. Nearly 750,000 pounds, worth $2 billion of gold, was extracted during the gold rush. Gold fever struck near and far with gold hunters coming from as far as Mexico, Chile, Peru, Hawaii, and China, and by the end of the decade, California's population had grown to 380,000. In 1717, the United Kingdom inadvertently established the gold standard when Sir Isaac Newton overvalued the guinea, linking a value of 77 shillings to gold at mint price. The country officially adopted the gold standard in 1819. The United States had already been operating on a bimetallic standard, silver and gold, and the gold standard was informally adopted in 1834. The price of gold was set at $20.67 per ounce, and remained at that price until 1993. In 1861, the first paper currency was printed in the U.S., and in 1900, Congress passed the Gold Standard Act, making the U.S.'s relationship with gold official. The Gold Standard Act, enacted by the 56th United States Congress and signed by President William McKinley, declared that gold was the only standard for redeeming paper money. Many other countries adopted the gold standard during the late 19th century in order to standardize transactions in an increasingly global market. The Federal Reserve and the Decline of the Gold Standard In 1913, the Federal Reserve was created with the gold standard in mind. The law necessitated that the Federal Reserve hold gold equal to 40% of the value of the paper currency it issued and to exchange Federal Reserve notes, more commonly known as dollars, for gold at a fixed price of $20.67 per ounce of pure gold. The gold standard deteriorated in 1914 as a result of the economic impacts of World War I. The US and Europe suspended the gold standard in order to print the copious amounts of money needed to finance the war. This first deviation from the gold standard is considered to be the start of its overall downfall. From 1925 to 1931, the modified gold exchange standard was used. This allowed countries to hold gold, dollars, or pounds as reserves with the exception of the United Kingdom and the United States which only held gold in reserve. But even a modified gold standard was proving to be a major cause of deflation, unemployment, and the general downturn in the world economy. By the 1930s, many countries jumped ship and abandoned the gold standard as the Great Depression tore through the world economy. In 1933, Americans rushed to the banks and withdrew large quantities of gold, depleting the Federal Reserves. In March of the same year, the Federal Reserve Bank of New York could not fulfill its promise to convert currency to gold at the established rate of $20.67 per ounce of gold. In light of the emergent situation, President Franklin D. Roosevelt declared a national banking holiday on March 6. When the banks reopened on the 13th of March, they had turned all of their gold over to the Federal Reserve, and the public could no longer withdraw gold or export it. A month later, under the Emergency Banking Act, the President officially suspended the gold standard and compelled Americans to turn their gold into the banks in exchange for dollars. The gold that was surrendered created the Federal Gold Reserves housed at Fort Knox, Kentucky. The following year, the Gold Reserve Act made the private ownership of gold permissible only with a license. President Roosevelt increased the price of gold from $20.67 to $20.67 in 
to $35 per ounce, which effectively led to the devaluation of the dollar. The dollar replaces gold. In 1945, Congress ratified the Bretton Woods Agreement and the system was adopted by and used in most countries. It required participating countries to convert foreign official holdings of their currency into gold at certain par values. At this time, the US held in its Federal Reserves the majority of the world's gold, and because of this, many countries tied the value of their currency to the US dollar rather than gold, making the dollar the de facto universal currency. In the 1970s, President Richard Nixon halted the redemption of dollars for gold, which effectively nullified the gold standard. He changed the price of gold to $38 per ounce, and then again to $42.22 per ounce, and in 1976 abandoned the gold standard altogether. As a result, Americans were permitted to own gold other than jewelry, but the price of gold skyrocketed to $124.84 per ounce. In 1975, trading in gold began on New York's Commodity Exchange and on Chicago's International Monetary Market and Board of Trade. We're living in the first time in history since gold was first used to back currency. That gold doesn't actually back currency, but if governments are no longer using gold to back their currencies, is it really that valuable? You bet it is. No one can quite pinpoint what it is about gold that draws us to it. It's a mystery yet to be solved. Maybe it's the warm gold color or the way it glitters. Maybe it's the versatility. Maybe it's that it's increasingly rare and difficult to mine. Maybe it's because our bodies contain trace amounts of it. Maybe it's that gold remains consistently steady in the face of inflation. Maybe it's that a ring cast today would contain traces of gold from the same gold that adorned Cleopatra's neck, was refined in Nebuchadnezzar's fiery furnace, or that graced the ancient altar of the God of Israel. Nearly every one of the 187,000 ounces of gold ever mined remains on the surface of the earth today. Despite gold's obsolete role in backing fiat, or government-produced currency, the demand for gold remains consistent. The price of gold reached a record high of $1,895 an ounce in September 2011. So yeah, you could safely say gold is holding its value. When financial crises loom, investors look to gold. All fiat currencies have fallen by the wayside at some point or another. You don't hear of anyone opening their wallet and pulling out a shekel to buy a new pair of shoes. Or duck it to pay for a candy bar. Coins with Caesar's face on them are no longer legal tender. To be fair, in the United States of America at least, you can't just roll into a luxury car dealership and pay for the latest sports car with a bar of gold either. But. There is a universal understanding of how much that gold bar is worth. It's still relevant. It has meaning and value in our economy. You can trade it on the stock market. As governments, businesses, and individuals face the uncertainties that lie ahead, investors are looking to gold. Historically, when governments print substantial amounts of cash to bolster the economy, the currency of the day loses value and faith in the financial system begins to falter. Governments can print endless amounts of cash until it's no longer worth the paper it's printed on. But you can't make more gold. And with each year that passes, new gold becomes harder to come by, making it even more coveted. As the world braces for more economic hardship, and 2020 turns the corner into the fourth quarter, it should come as no surprise that the price of gold has steadily increased and investors have embraced it as a key portfolio hedging strategy. So my name is Austin Silver. I've been trading professionally full-time now for the last four years. Over the course of the last four years, I've also been coaching 
hundreds of traders now, and I'm very grateful for that from all over the world because of this beautiful thing called the internet. So trading has afforded me the luxury of you know control over my time, and I've also been able to give back and help a lot of other people achieve that as well. So it's been very rewarding and very fulfilling, and now I'm getting to this point in my career where I'm looking to diversify, I'm looking to actually look into moving money out of the Forex trading that I've been so in love with and actually keep trading Forex, but also looking to kind of, like I said, put money in other buckets. And that's what's really um, pushed me into actually gold a lot over the last 12 to 24 months. It's like I caught the bug, so to speak, because I actually had some more capital to throw into it. So I started doing more research and I kind of just fell down this rabbit hole, you know? And if we are going through fiscal change, like real monetary change where the dollar could be debased and things like that, gold is the safe bet, bet to be. And Dalio is somebody who studies those cycles and has gone back to like even the Romans and tried to study their cycles of their economy. And he's trying to apply that model. That's what his whole book is about, trying to apply that to current day. And he's saying we're headed towards this new world order, a whole new way of doing finance over the next 10, 20, even into 30 years. But then it starts over again. And then there's going to be a huge boom of, of prosperity in this new way of doing business. But before that, I still think we're going to go through it. But through it, what has held value is gold. The stock market could take another hit. There's no telling what's to come. You know what I mean? So we have to, I think, still through all the chaos, look at something that holds value through chaos. The fact that the stock market is up right now, I mean, the S&P is like literally points under its all-time high. Considering what's going on, we have 40, 50 million people unemployed still in the States. It's rough, you know? So it's a very weird atmosphere. But what seems to be a sure bet even to the big guys is gold. So it's like, why would we fight what the big guys are doing too? You know, if I can get my piece of the cake, I could still make a little bit of money in this. I might not make as much as Dalio, but I could still, you know, do well on it, you know?